Hello, my name is Hugo Vicente Miranda and I'm a researcher at Nova Medical School and I head the Dysmetabolism in Brain Diseases Lab. So in our lab, uh, the major goal is actually to identify the un underlying causes of neurodegenerative diseases, in particular in Parkinson's disease. Since the majority of cases are in fact not genetic, uh, only 10% are genetic, we have to find other solutions and that's why we focus on the risk factors that are associated with Parkinson's disease. And there is a strong epidemiological association between two known diseases, uh, such as type 2 diabetes mellitus and Parkinson's disease. Meaning that, for example, if a young individual within 25 to 45 years old develops type 2 diabetes, the risk of developing Parkinson's disease is almost four times higher than a normal person. One of the major pathological uh, hallmarks of this disease is actually the accumulation of a small protein that is called alpha-synuclein. So this protein aggregates in the neurons, becomes toxic, and drives to this neurogeneration process. And dopaminergic neurons are actually uh, susceptible to this uh, protein and they become less functional and this has consequences mainly in what concerns to the motor controls. So, to explore the association between type 2 diabetes mellitus and Parkinson's disease, we have looked at the uh, direct consequence of the excessive sugars in the brain. So these sugars can react in a non-programmed way with cells in a reaction that is called glycation, which drives to modifications in the cell that can be pathogenic. And this is what we have tested with a small molecule that is named methylglyoxal. In order to unveil what is the impact of glycation in the brain, we use the well-established mouse model of Parkinson's disease. These animals overexpress the human wild-type alpha-synuclein in the brain. To study the impact of sugars in the brain, we teamed up with the lab of Lisa Lopes. We gathered these uh, different uh, behavioral tests. The first one was the rotor rod, which is really a test that tells us if mice can keep their coordination at normal levels, which is affected in Parkinson's. And in this case, what happened was, as you know, our mice, the mice that were uh, sick and got the the glycation, they actually perform much worse than the other animals. Next, we use the pole test also to evaluate motor performance. In this test, we observe that the mice that overexpress of synuclein and were treated with methylrioxal also performed worse. But we also wanted to assess other symptoms that are present in, um, in patients and are actually symptoms that arise even before we see all of these major uh, motor symptoms such as olfaction. And so for that, we did all of these more sensory tests to see if they were actually impaired, and they were. So we use the block test. That is a test that uh, assess sensitivity to social smells. And we found that uh, mice overexpressing of synuclein under glycating conditions were less sensitive mm -hmm. to sense that social smell. And then we also assess cognition, right? Yes. Uh, and for that, we use a very simple test in which the animals have to um, recognize a place where they've been before and actually because mice like novelty they always prefer the novel this the space where they haven't been so that gives us an idea of whether they can remember or not a previous space that they explored so in this kind of memory actually the mice that had overexpression of alpha-synuclein were glycated actually performed worse as well with this uh, behavioral analysis we conclude that glycation in alpha-synuclein overexpressing mice really anticipates, triggers or aggravates motor performance, cognitive dysfunction and also olfactory impairment. By using biochemical techniques, we found that glycation was potentiating the accumulation of alpha-synuclein in several brain regions, including the midbrain, one of the most affected regions in Parkinson's disease and where the dopaminergic neurons are contained. At this stage, we already know that glycation is driving to several behavioral consequences on the mice. But what is happening in the brain? To help us answer this question, we team up with the mass spectrometry unit here at IBET and ITKB. In this work, we use SWAT MS, which is a high sensitive technique, to quantify the proteins in the mice brain. Being the main goal of this project to understand the impact of glycation, we customized our software to provide important information about the proteins that are glycated in the mouse brain provided all the data that the uh, mass spectrometry unit gathered, we had to do a bioinformatic analysis. So the first step was to do advanced statistics 
in order to identify which of the proteins were differently present in each of these experimental conditions. What we saw is that there is a mechanism that is changed. So there is a, this a signaling that is called a glutamatergic signaling that is an excitatory uh, mechanism uh, is altered in these conditions triggered by methyloxal in these mice. But the problem of this excessive glutamate that is picked up by the neurons is that it triggers a lot of these calcium entries and this can actually become excitotoxic, meaning that this excessive glutamate can actually drive to neuronal loss. And remarkably, this kind of mechanism is actually associated with Parkinson's disease and there is uh, several researchers that actually defend that this can be a triggering event of Parkinson's disease. We are now at the privileged position because we know the proteins and the mechanisms that are affected by glycation and by so we can test if those mechanisms and proteins can be actually targeted for therapeutic purposes. We are currently looking at, for example, at anti-diabetic medication to know if it has this uh, potential to prevent glycation and by doing so, if we can actually prevent all of these pathogenic mechanisms that we have described that glycation is playing in the brain. And now knowing the details in terms of the neurons that are affected, so mainly this part of the glutamatergic synapses, we can actually try to modulate this glutamatergic system to know it has a good impact in terms of preventing the pathology. Altogether, we believe that this work is actually uh, establishing this connection between type 2 diabetes and Parkinson's disease in a stronger way, and actually defining that glycation can be here the underlying mechanism that is establishing this association. Thank you.